You guys, I need to play this. We need to watch this. Fumble a bag, now I will not fumble a bag. Act like you know how this goes. Here we go again. I see something really cool and I'm like, I have to try this. So this is a video by Val's Looks, who is an amazingly talented creator, creative director. So there are four transitions in this video. They're really cool, like cut out 3D perspective transitions. I think we have to do everything in After Effects, but first I need some footage to try this on. So I'm gonna go film some things. So Val shot this on five different backgrounds. And for each transition, she's matching up the poses. So you definitely need to plan it out because each scene is gonna be one take. I'm gonna film everything here in my office because I'm scared to film myself in public. As far as gear goes, I'm shooting this on my Sony a7S III with a fisheye lens, but you can use any lens or camera that you like, as well as this little Amaran light that I'm gonna stick on top of my camera. I think the biggest thing for all your shots is to make sure you're shooting from the same angle and that your subject is as closely matched up in relation to your camera as can be. Let's film this. I use me taking photos on different cameras as my action for the transitions. Before we begin, you'll definitely need a basic understanding of After Effects, keyframe animation, and masking. Transition number one is the subject being cut out and falling backwards camera zooms in and back out to a new scene where the subject then snaps into place from the front. Here are the two clips I'm using for this. Before we break this down step by step, here's a cheat sheet. For all four transitions, you're gonna set up your clips in the same way. Freeze frame at the point of transition, mask out your subject, duplicate that layer and invert the mask. So now you have the cutout and the background. Then depending on the transition, you'll keyframe animate the cutout and or background. Let's get into the first transition. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need to freeze the end of this shot so that we can cut out the subject and then animate the cutout. So I'm gonna start by clicking Command D and that's gonna duplicate this layer. I'm gonna rename this to Shot One Cutout. I'm gonna make sure my playhead is right at the end here. Right click, go to Time and go to Freeze Frame. Now we have just our freeze frame. We're gonna go ahead and move all our other shots over because we don't need them right now. Take this frozen frame and I'm gonna drag it right here to the end of shot one. Draw a mask around myself, which is the subject that we want to be cut out. To do this, you can go up top here, select the pen tool, or just click G on your keyboard. And then you're gonna go ahead and draw around your subject. We've made our cutout. Click Command D to duplicate this layer. Rename this new layer shot one BG for background. Open the drop down menu under mask and change to subtract. We then have one layer with just our cutout and one layer reverse with our background. Select the cutout layer. Over here, you'll see a little cube icon. Underneath that icon in the empty box, you'll click to toggle it on. This is gonna make your layer 3D, which is how we're gonna animate pretty much all of these transitions. Open the layers drop down menu under transform. This is where we'll be adding keyframe animations. First, we're gonna change the anchor point. The anchor point is seen as like the center of gravity. We wanna make this at the bottom of our cutout. It'll make animating a whole lot easier as the cutout falls backwards. This blue center dot is our anchor point. Under transform, you'll see anchor point here. Select and drag it to the right until the bottom of the cutout hits that blue dot. Now this will be the center point when we animate. Under transform, go to position and drag your cutout back down to its original place. Then you're gonna wanna click the watch icons to add keyframes at the beginning here. This is so that everything will stay in place as we start our transition. Move the playhead a few frames forward, drag the X rotation to the left until the cutout has fallen flat. To make the animation smoother, I'm gonna highlight all my keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease or F9 on the keyboard. Another reoccurring must do is adding motion blur. That's gonna be right near the 3D layer icon. Looks like a bunch of little circles. Toggle that on for your layer. You can also add a glow outline to your cutouts. Go to the effects tab and type in glow. Drag that or double click to add to your clip. Change the glow based on to alpha channels. You can customize things like the color and the glow radius as well. 
So the first half of this transition is done. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight my three clips here from my first shot. Right click, go to pre-compose and move everything into a new comp. And I'm gonna call this shot one. And the reason I'm pre-comping everything is because we're gonna animate this scene to zoom into the black part of this cutout. That way we can zoom out into the next shot. So I'm gonna go into my drop down transform and right as it's about halfway falling down, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle my position keyframe and my scale keyframe. Drag my playhead right to the end here. Once it lands and I'm gonna zoom in until the whole screen is filled with the black. Add the motion blur to this animation. Take our second shot, bring it up here. And now for our second clip in this transition, we're basically gonna do the same thing in reverse. Duplicate the layer, Command D, right click, time, freeze frame, draw a mask around the subject. Duplicate our cutout layer, reverse it by changing the mask to subtract. Move the background layer under the cutout layer. Toggle the cutout layer to be 3D. Move the anchor point to the bottom. Put the position back in place. Add our keyframes. Highlight all the keyframes and move them over because this is where we want the animation to land. Drag the playhead back to the beginning of the cutout layer. Drag the X rotation to the right until it's flat. So now it snaps from the front into place. Add Easy Ease and Motion Blur. Select our cutout and our background. Right click and pre-compose this. I'm gonna rename it Shot 2 Camera Zoom. Go into my drop down and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just in reverse, we're gonna go ahead and move our playhead forward. Add our keyframes for where we want this to land. Go back to the beginning. Zoom all the way in to where the screen is fully black. Do a little adjusting here, add motion blur to our pre-comp. Once this lands into place, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this and then bring our live action scene right to where that ends so that it immediately goes into the next flow. And there you have it, transition number one. Transition number two is a really cool 3D foreground background flip into each other. Process is gonna be similar to the first transition, except we'll be animating the background layer as well. These are the two shots I'm gonna use for this. To save some time here, you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing as with the first transition. Create those two freeze frame layers, one with the cutout and one with the background. Make both these layers 3D. Select the background layer and add keyframes in the beginning. Move my playhead forward, adjust the X rotation until it's completely flat. Easy ease the keyframes and add motion blur. Go to the cutout layer, start the keyframe animation a little bit later, play around with the X rotation and position keyframe so it looks like it's popping out. Easy ease the keyframes and add motion blur. Second half of this transition is the same thing in reverse. Create those two freeze frame layers, one with the cutout and one with the background. I'll start with our background clip and go to transform. Once again, I'm gonna add a bunch of keyframes, but I'm gonna move these back because this is where we want it to land. Same with our cutout. I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of keyframes, move them back to line up with our background shot here. And I'm gonna go to X rotation, drag this forward because our background is gonna flip in from the front like that. Go to our cutout, and then our cutout's gonna rotate from the back. So we're gonna put that this way. Once again, easy ease, and add motion blur. Then we end up with this. Transition number three is where the cutout falls forward, and as that's happening, the background changes into the new scene, and a new subject snaps in from behind. I'm using these two clips here. Once again, create those two layers, cutout and background. Make the cutout layer 3D. Anchor point to the bottom of the layer. Reset the position back into place. Add keyframes. Move the playhead forward. Animate some of the X and Y rotation, position and scale. Basically get it to look like it's falling forward. Easy ease your keyframes and add motion blur. As the cutout falls forward, the background needs to transition to the background of the next shot. So go ahead and create those two freeze frame layers for your next shot. 
Then you're gonna drag the background layer underneath the first part of our transition. Select the background layer of the first scene and in the effects tab, add the luma key effect. Go to the dropdown and find it under effects. Add a keyframe under threshold, move the playhead forward, and once the cutout from the first scene has fallen, drag the threshold all the way up until it's fully transitioned to the new scene. Bring the cutout from the new scene in, make it 3D, change the anchor point to the bottom, Put the position back, add our keyframes so it lands in this position, move the keyframes forward and then animate the cutout to fly in from the back. Then you get something like this and right when the cutout lands into place, we're going to cut the clips short, Command shift D, we'll split them, delete that, bring back the live action and we get that. Transition number four is the most complicated one out of all of them. You have the background flying up and as it runs down the subject, the subject transitions and then the new background scene flies into place. Here are the two clips I'm gonna use for this. To start, you're gonna do the same as all the other transitions where you create the two layers, one with your cutout and one with your background. Now we're gonna animate our background layer to fly up through the cutout. So we're gonna make both the background and the cutout 3D layers. Go to the background, add our usual keyframes, playhead forward, move the X rotation, move the positioning up, get it to jump up like this. Animate it flying down and rotating, moving the position down and also changing the Z rotation. Then you have something like this. Now we want this cutout to transition to the next shot cutout as it's going down. I'm going to select my cutout layer and I'm just going to draw a quick mask around it. Go into the mask that I just created and change it to intersect. So now I can animate this mask to move downward with the background. So I'm going to do that. Start by having it up here. Go right to when it starts moving down at about here. And we can add a mask path keyframe. And then as it moves all the way to the bottom, we can drag these down until it's completely gone. And then below all that, we will take a cutout from this shot, drag our cutout layer underneath this initial transition here add another mask just to clean it up and then we'll keyframe that mask as well as it moves down. So go to our drop down, change it to subtract, and then we'll add a keyframe at the mask path. And then once it drags all the way down, we can move this out of the way. That way we ensure that none of this cutout is showing in the initial transition. So then we have this. I'm gonna go to our background layer, make it 3D, go to transform, gonna add a bunch of keyframes here just so we can save this positioning, move these keyframes back. I am going to basically try and line it up with the beginning half of our transition background layer. So I'm gonna go here and adjust this so that it's flat, maybe change the rotation. I also forgot to make the cutout a 3D layer so do that as well so that it's in between the background move the positioning down as well so now you end up with something like this so now the background's gonna go ahead and animate back into place here remember to easy ease and add motion blur and then once everything lands into place we can trim it and bring our moving image into it and that is transition number four. Now that we have all our transitions set and in place, I'm gonna go in and stylize everything. Add some glow outline to the cutouts. From my very own paper asset pack, gonna overlay this texture grain that I have. And underneath my transitions, gonna add this white paper texture. By the way, a link to my paper pack is in the description if you wanna check it out. Also threw on a VHS preset did some speed ramping to bring some energy into it. And here is the final recreation.
pretty good. Not, I mean, not as good as the original. It's really easy to film, which is nice. Post-production, a little bit more tedious than I would like. Obviously tricky if you don't know After Effects, but you end up with some really cool 3D looking transitions. I'm not sure if this is exactly how Val's looks does it, but I tried my best. This is my best guess. I love reverse engineering, really cool content I see from really talented people in the hopes that I might learn something. I can't wait to try out this style in different variations and hopefully you learn something too. Let me know what you think, how it turned out. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.